Our first guest tonight is the host of what they call in his country a chat show. He came to America in a tugboat and went on to become a 12-time Emmy winner and the most irresponsible driver in L.A. This is his final week of shows on CBS, concluding with a primetime special called The Last, Last, Late, Late Show with James Corden Carpool Karaoke Special. That's on Thursday at 10, followed by his last Late Late Show. Please welcome James Corden. I've been thinking about you a lot this week, and I wonder what, what's going through your head. You have, what, like three regular shows left? And we, we, just, we just shot a show just now, finished the show, yeah. uh, came over, which will be on right after this. If you switch over, as soon as this is finished, I'm not losing your viewers, happy to lose ABCs. You <laughs> switch over. Uh, no, and then, um, and then three more. And then three more, and that's yeah, it. It's, it's, uh, it'll, we'll round out at exactly 1,200 shows. Are which you is... paying special attention, trying to remember everything? trying to just take it all in and slow it down so you can think about it? Yeah, remember. that's a good way of putting it. You're sort of, it's, you know, you're just trying to soak it up, really. That's, yeah. that's what you're trying to do. It's a, it's a, it's a you know, and it, it's only really people that have done shows like this, and it's not just you and I, the whole teams that, that make these shows, and you, you essentially create a, a found family, really. Yeah. And that's... That's what starts to mark the show for you more than the actual doing of the show, I find. And so, you know, yeah, you do. Every time, it's a lot of lasts. Oh, this is the last Crosswalk the Musical is going to go out on Wednesday and the last Carpool and the last... And all those things, just the last everything. And that's it's a lot, huh? It's a lot, yeah. It's hard to take in. Yeah, I would think it really so. is. And I also want to thank you for something. I, I, I was thinking about this. Like, you came over here. You could have gone with Jimmy. Your name is James. My name is James, too. That would have thrown us into a really serious problem situation. Well, that, that really, I think that, that even went above uh, the, the heads at CBS. That was more a sort of government uh, response, really. That the, I don't think you're allowed legally three Jimmys. There's a maximum? There can't be three Jimmys. They were just like, this is too much for the American people, you know. I learned also that your middle name is Kimberly, which would have made you Jimmy Kimberly, which would have been weird. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It is, that is my middle name. My middle what? name is James Kimberly Corden. Why is your middle name Kimberly? Well, you can ask the man responsible. He sat right there. My mum and dad are here. Oh, your parents? My mum and dad are coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've, uh... That's right, you So... <laughs> your dad's a Kimberly, too? Dad's, dad's a Kimberly, granddad's a Kimberly, great granddad was a Kimberly, and wow. uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a big, it's a big thing in our. Oh, here we go. So, Look out. So, so what? Yes. What happened was, when my grandfather was born, his auntie had to take him to be christened because his mum was poorly, and on the way, they'd heard that the Boers had been defeated in the Battle of Kimberley. And she said, we're putting that in this lad's name. Wow. Mm. So, so he was Thomas Edwin Kimberly Corden. My, my dad was Cedric Kimberly Corden, Malcolm Kimberly Corden, James Kimberly Corden. So if it had yeah. gone the other way. Yeah, but you, if, you tell this, to tell, if you tell the story at school that that's where it came from, it still doesn't get it a lot of <laughs> It's still, it's still not a good, it's still not a good thing. Did you name your son Kimberly? My, well, this was a big thing for me and my wife because we knew that we were having a son and I was like, can I do this to him? You know, <laughs> can I really? But then I thought it's a, we don't have a, we don't have a mass of family traditions in our family. Like we, we even have that, you, you know that show, Who Do You Think You Are? Yeah. They, they came to maybe look at my, they were like, oh, we'd love to make a Who Do You Think? And I love that show. I was like, that would be amazing. And so they went off, did loads of research and came back and went, no, this is really boring. There's nothing... <laughs> there is literally nothing interesting has ever happened in your family's life. So, uh, so I really thought long and hard about, do we call him Kimberly? Do we not? And then we actually, what we did was we... Uh, gave, we did call him Kimberly, but I said, we've got to counterbalance it with something cool. We've got to counterbalance the Kimberly with something else. So at the time that my wife was pregnant, 
I was, um, I'd written a, a sitcom for the BBC uh, called Gavin and Stacey, which people, people liked. Yeah. Um, and, and we were doing, um, we were doing a sketch for comic relief. It was, in fact, the sketch that had the first iteration of what went, what came, went on to become Carpool Karaoke, which was me and George Michael in a car. And we knew that we had to get Paul McCartney. If we got Paul McCartney, Everyone else would say yes because Paul McCartney's in it. You know, right. you've done these things. You, that's how it works. You get the biggest person first. That's people right. go, well, that's strength in that. It's fine. Yeah. So, um, unless you're doing that Imagine video and then. Then, then, it's then bad. don't do that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we're still to this day, I'm gobsmacked that I'm not in. But um, <laughs> be honest, you're all expecting me to pop up at some point. Can you imagine? <laughs> so, anyway, when you're trying to get Paul McCartney to do something, um, like we were due to speak at 4 p.m. And someone calls you at like 3.45 and goes, hi, uh, just calling from um, Sir Paul's office, uh, just checking that you're by the phone. And you're like, yeah, no, I know. I'm so by the phone. I'm talking on it right now. But it's <laughs> that sort of pressured environment. So anyway, me and Paul, he calls. I've never spoken to him before. We have small talk, small talk. And then, uh, and then I explained to him, I said, look, the way that these sketches work is they drive donations on the night, but also... Um, this year for comic relief, you, people will be able to buy the sketch. And I think, and I might get this wrong, I think you could buy it for £1.75. You could download and buy the sketch. And I said, the reason it's that price, Paul, is that that price is the exact cost of 10 malaria vaccines for children in Africa. So whether you want to acknowledge it, whether you want to accept it or, or, or even deal with the fact that it's, that it's the truth, if you can find... 20 minutes over the next 11 weeks to film our sketch, children won't die, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then I just stopped talking. Uh, and he went, blimey, James, I've heard some pitches in my time, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> and I said, well, that's nothing. I said, I was going to say, if you'd said no to that, I would name my unborn son after you. And he went, deal. If you do that, I'll do the sketch. So anyway, we did the sketch. Max was born, and we christened him Max McCartney Kimberly Corden, and we took a photo of it. We sent, I sent a photo of the birth certificate to him, to Paul. Paul was like, I can't believe you've done this. And about three days later, this beautiful blanket arrived, this sort of lovely blanket, and embroidered in the corner of the blanket, blanket it said, uh, to Max, from one McCartney to another, love your Uncle Paul. And I thought, well, he may be saddled with Kimberly, but at least he's got a really cool story <laughs> to tell when he's older. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> James Corden is with us. It's his last week. We'll be right back. We have had the best times here. And, oh, uh, my God, we really have. Our, <laughs> our friendship I'm... and our family's friendship is absolutely <laughs> not... It has nothing to do with distance. I know. And time. I'm just not ready to come back yet, otherwise I would come back with you. you. That is James Corden and uh, Adele in the final carpool karaoke. Yeah, last one ever. Yeah. <laughs> A yeah. tearful carpool karaoke. Well, I didn't know it was happening. I thought our last one was we did the last one was with Diddy, uh -huh. and we shot that, and I had a blast. I had a great time. It was brilliant. And I thought, oh, that's our last one. He's someone we always wanted to do it with. It was great. And then I'm in bed one day, and uh, I get woken up by Adele smashing these cymbals uh, above me as I'm asleep, and she said, it's your last carpool, and I'm going to drive you to work. So it was all very... It was amazing, and I, I, I love her so much for doing it because... She didn't have to do that, and she's been, uh, you know, I think it's, it's evident, if anybody's seen it, that, that we, we've, we moved here a week apart, basically. We moved to L.A. a week apart, and, and it's been an incredible journey for both of our families, and I'll always... I can't believe she did that for me. It's amazing. You're, um, and then you're going back uh, sometime within the next couple of months. Yeah. You have three children. We mm. talked about your, your son. Your daughter was born here, your youngest in, in the She's United American. States. We're going to leave her here. She yes. will stay here. That's good. That's, <laughs> that seems like the, she should be with her people. That's the <laughs> wise thing. Although, I mean, she's five. Although Tucker Carlson stepping down might mean her. She, she was a big fan of his show. So I don't <laughs> she know. was. Yeah, oh, very much gosh. so. Loved it. This Loved has got to be it. a really tough week Loved for her it. then. <laughs> 
Do you think, well, are you re-Britishizing the kids, like explaining, like, oh, over there, you know, we call it a lift instead of an elevator? <laughs> no, uh, no, we're not. Maybe no. we should be. Yeah, you should. We don't, we're just, uh, look, it's going to be a very, very big adjustment for, for us in, in every single way. But I do, we do feel, like, we, in truth, my wife and I have known that we were going to do this for, for a few years now uh, because we always said that, that when Max hit sixth grade, that that would be the turning point. If we had always felt unfair to us to move uh, 14, 15, 16-year-olds around. And so it just feels like it's time, time to go home. And I'm so proud of the show, and it's nothing to do with not wanting to host the show anymore. I just, I love it. I love doing it. You know that the family we've created is amazing, but it, it does feel like the right thing to do. There are people back there who are getting older that we want to be with and be mm -hmm. around. You know, the like only the people... King. The, the king, king, the yeah. king, of course, mm -hmm. absolutely needs me. The only people, the only people who I think are disappointed that we're moving back are my mum and dad because they love coming to Los Angeles. Oh, is that right? So much. Can I tell they you just, something? They love it so much. Can I tell you something? And I actually, and I apologize for this, but your parents came to my dressing room and they asked me if they could stay and if I could be their new son. They'll, they'll, they'll do it. Yeah. They'll do it. My, the mum, mummy can't believe she can't believe it's her last time in Los Angeles. She's going to get her boobs done tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Who's your last guest? That's a big deal. Right? The last guest on the show we've got uh, tomorrow night. We got Billie Eilish and Natalie Portman on the last show. We have um, Will Ferrell. Uh, Harry Styles is going to be there. Wow. We have some other surprises. We have some other stuff. We have a big, uh, a big bit with Tom Cruise. It's going to be on our primetime special uh, that we shot very close to this studio, actually. And we've done some big things over the time. And this might be the silliest. Do yeah. you and Tom cry in this um, bit? We don't cry. No, no We don't crying cry in, in this one. The only crying is that bit with Adele. And then it'll be me on my last show, yeah. just. I'm so glad you're going to cry, because I feel like sometimes I'm the only one that cries, and it's nice to have. I, and now I'm losing, like, no, I'm another gonna, crier. I know. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Why are we the only criers? I think we're just better, more sensitive people. That's why. <laughs> Either that or we're emotionally unstable. Who it could knows? be one of those yeah, We two are things. the only criers. We're the only <laughs> ones together. Uh, I have a gift for you before you go. No. Uh, now, when you retire uh, from being a talk show host, especially for a long time, and especially at CBS, you have to do one of these. And I don't know if you have it in you genetically, but this is um, your <laughs> talk show retirement beer. OK. OK. Yeah. Much Absolutely. like um, David Letterman before you, now that you're leaving. <laughs> But also, I'm also, I'm unemployed on Friday, and if you're in the UK around Christmas time, you're going to see this guy <laughs> in a mall, you know, that'll be me. No, I'm very, this is good. Yeah. This is good. Are you still taking summers off? <laughs> yeah, I am, yeah. So if I grow this beard, go, oh, can I come back and host this show Absolutely. in the summer? Absolutely. Yeah. the whole summer. <laughs> James Corden, everybody, is the final, the final lead the Lake Lake Show. And the primetime special, the last, last late, late show with James Corden, Carpool Karaoke special Thursday night. We'll be back with Richard Madden. Ta -da -da.